The United States is at a moment where it could really transform its assessment systems. Most of our testing is multiple choice tests. Pick one answer out of five, which is something you will never do in applying knowledge in the real world. Our assessments need to evolve to reflect the skills and knowledge that we actually value and that we need schools to teach and our students to learn. Human beings are naturally learners. We are learning every moment of every day. Uh, in school, we have particular things to learn, and we know that students learn more effectively when we're clear about what the goals are. I kind of like, I want like a goal in my head, like about like what to do with the information that I get. So if they're gonna teach me how to do a like, one page equation, I wanna know what can I do with that. I look at the beginning of the year, and I say, what are the big ideas that I want students to know? in the whole year and what are the major skills I want them to be able to do. And then I backwards map those skills and ideas into little chunks. I try to have a really clear learning outcome every day that's measurable so at the end of class students can say, this is how close I got to meeting the outcome for the day. We use the language um, emerging, developing, proficient, or advanced. And if they know where they are on that rubric, then I don't have to own that for every student. And I think that's really powerful. Assessment should occur early and often and throughout the process. I do a lot of formative assessments. So formative assessments meaning it's not summative, it's not a test at the end of the week or the end of a unit. You're doing a lot of small check-ins with the students to see where they're at and to see that they're growing along. How do you know that? Because I read it in the Saturn book. In the Saturn book, so you're making a connection from text to text. Very good. They are being steered very gently and very strategically and the formative assessment gathering process is essential to that. You really have to know what kids know and don't know. In a lot of cases, we give students written feedback on the paper that they've written, but then we move on to the next thing and we don't give them the opportunity to actually rewrite that paper. And the research evidence is extremely clear that one of the strongest positive influences on achievement occurs when students get formative feedback that they immediately can apply. I think that's one of the things that the kids don't really like, is doing the reflecting, but I think it's actually one of the things that helps us a lot. I think doing it kind of like helps you see the bigger picture, because I don't think that if I didn't do reflecting, I wouldn't really think about like what I'm struggling with, or I would just kind of want to move on. Summative assessment just simply means an assessment from which we can draw a judgment about whether somebody has, at that moment, learned. A false distinction has cropped up in the United States, which seems to suggest that it's okay for external summative assessments to just be multiple choice tests. In other countries, summative assessments that occur periodically are essays and oral examinations and project-based assessments, so that what you're able to see about what students can do reflects more of what you actually want them to be able to do in the world beyond school. So tonight is exhibit night. Every nine weeks we have this big celebration of learning and the halls will be filled with parents and children who are all here to celebrate what their children have accomplished in the past nine weeks. We also use exhibits to assess the learning of our students. I like to go up to students and have them explain an exhibit to me so that I understand did they get the big idea? You know, did they just do a project or do they really understand what they did, why they did it, and what it means in terms of the bigger picture? What we find is that because the learning is so rich and it's so meaningful that our students do very well on standardized tests. Many schools that I've worked with have graduation portfolios where students have to complete projects. They often need to collaborate with others effectively as part of the work that they're going to present. They need to communicate in multiple forms. 
They need to be critical and creative problem solvers because they're going to run into barriers and obstacles and they have to solve them in order to complete this major project. So the blend of the cognitive and the non-cognitive skills that result often in them defending their work to a panel of outside evaluators really prepares them for the range of abilities they're going to need to have when they leave the boundaries of school. And I think it's possible to value these non-cognitive skills throughout school in the same way we value the academic skills. We try to bring in people from the community to watch or judge their presentations. And then just do things that's like, in your life, in a job, you might have to make a presentation to your boss about why your proposal should work. So 91% of the people I surveyed said that $15 for one unit is a perfect price for them. Really nicely done, good presentation, and um, I really like your product. So trying to model assessments after real life experiences, I think is really important. No one in their job, I don't think, has to bubble in a standardized test. Having 130 students means it's really easy to have no idea if your students are learning anything, because there's so many of them. Um, and that's when in the last couple of years I've realized the more that I can get them to take ownership of their learning, then I don't have to own that for every student. Something that I'm good at is researching in books and interviews and articles and to make sure that the information is accurate. Ideally, assessment is primarily for the student and the students should own big parts of the assessment process. Uh, that can happen in a variety of ways. One is that they are continually engaged in self-assessment and peer assessment using rubrics. So writing strengths. Creating good plans. And then areas for growth. Uh, I need to analyze my evidence in depth. When kids have that opportunity, they begin to value assessment. Assessment is for me as a way to get the feedback that allows me to become the person I want to be. If we do this well, the kind of learner we should produce is someone who is self-initiating and self-motivated, understands the standards internally, and is continually driving towards excellence, is continually uh, developing their own learning skills, uh, and is able ultimately to learn uh, on their own, independently, and collaboratively with others in a world that is going to be very uh, unpredictable and in which those learning skills are going to be the most important determinant of success.